All right, today we're gonna do a wall assembly for the Bells of Steel folding rack. We have an actual assembly video for the rack itself, but now I'm gonna show you how to put it onto the wall. We've made a video in the past that was really long and complicated, so this is a new fresh version of how to hang it on your wall. So um, I have studs that are metal. In any house, you're gonna have studs that are wood, which is a lot easier to tap into than metal studs. From experience, I'm gonna give you the quickest and easiest way to do this. So I like to use two by sixes for my stringers. I know for the rack to have a little bit of elevation off the floor so you can fold it. The center of the rack needs to be at eight inches for the bottom and then 83, so 83 for the top. So what I did was I took my two by six and I would do this all in pencil so you can erase it, but for visuals I did marker and I put a straight line down the middle of my two by six, which is not quite six inches wide. So measure it. And I put a center line all the way down the center. So I know I can easily maneuver it to where it needs to be on the wall. So I'm not sitting there with a measuring tape trying to struggle to get this thing in the air and put into the wall. When I'm talking about the center, so when the posts are attached to the rack, this part here where the bolt is, is gonna be on the center of this line. So I know from experience that eight inches and 83 are gonna be my marks where I want this two by six centered. A lot of times if you're doing it without measuring, you're gonna end up with it uneven and then the rack sits on the very bottom part of the wood. And then when you go nail it in, it splinters. Trust me, I know. So because I'm by myself, I went ahead and marked on the outside. Once again, I do this with pencil where my five feet is. So these are five feet marks in between. So I know roughly when I put that first screw in, it's somewhat level. It doesn't have to be perfect, but somewhat, I can at least get it close on one side and I can level the other side and drill in. I'm using three inch metal screws because I have metal studs. You're gonna wanna use three inch wood screws. So I have metal screws because I have metal studs. So the first thing that's kind of tough is finding the stud and doing it by yourself to put this first bolt in and then it's really easy after that. I'll do it over here. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is find my first stud and then I'm gonna mark it on my wood. This is definitely the toughest part, getting the first one nailed in. So I'm gonna check again. And I know right there I've got a stud. So it looks like I'm, you have to be really precise with these. So it looks like I'm really in the center there so I can grab my screwdriver Got my screwdriver. So I got my first bolt in super easy. It was just easy, easy peasy. So now I'm gonna take my level and I'm gonna get this thing level. It should line up with that uh, hole or that line over there. It should line up with that line over there. I'm gonna find me another stud. And I'll just use my level to hold it. And then I'll mark here. Now I know where it's at. Now that it's holding myself, I'm just gonna go through and put uh, bolts, or I'm gonna go through and put screws on the studs. I'd put two on each, but keep it out of the center line because it's gonna wanna crack if it's with other big drilling spots. But yeah, I'm gonna go through and here's how I do it. I'm not a construction expert by any means. I'm gonna find it, punch a hole. Find it, punch a hole. Kind of medieval, but it works. I'm burying these a little bit. That way this, the heads don't get in the way. If it can hold me, it'll hold anybody. Okay, 
So now that we have the top done, 83 inches, um, let's do the bottom. We'll fast forward through that and then I'll meet you on the rack part. All right, so I have the rack assembled now. Um, the big thing for these measurements is I'm at the third hole from the top for my first bolt and I'm at the second hole from the bottom for my first bolt on the bottom. And I put these three quarter inch spacers, I have two of them. The reason I do an inch and a half off the ground is most garages are really unlevel. So it could, there could be a giant variance when you're swinging it in and out. That is a lot of gap. So two things, one, you can go down to one mat and just take these dimensions down an inch. So you could go 82 on the top and seven on the bottom. But just from personal experience with how uneven garages are, normally there's something in the way. So that's why I have them high off the ground and it's really easy to swing. Make sure whatever mat you're putting underneath to keep it up off the ground while you're drilling in place is on the very edge so you can easily kick it out when you're done and you're not trying to rip that thing out and uh, just rip whatever mat you have underneath there. But once again, if you want it lower to the ground, you can take all these dimensions and drop them an inch. Um, also, you can put this thing flat on the ground if you have no plans to move it in or out. If you just want it sturdy and stable, just put that bad boy on the ground and just drill in and you can take two inches off my measurements. But from experience, I use an inch and a half because I have three quarter inch mats and I ended up right in the center. The last part is kind of my biggest tip and trick on all this is please drill a pilot hole first before you put these giant lag bolts in. I'm using three inch by half inch and it takes a 19 millimeter socket to run this into the wall but drill a hole first, otherwise it will start splintering the wood really, really bad. Also, maybe put your drill on a, on a lesser setting and don't just ram it in there. Like, have it take its time and don't put it on the highest setting to ram it in there. Uh, so pre-drill that hole first and then put this giant lag bolt in. I use a half inch and it works really well. I've got one in and then I go, I go cross with it. So I'll do the bottom, then the side. I'll do it in a cross pattern to make sure it's nice and centered and then we'll kick the mats out and I'll show you the swing. If you want to, you can also put washers on these, but I'm not a big washer guy. I just lose them. So you can see how easy that was. Not a hard struggle, my mats are out. So I don't have the pins in. So I don't have the pins in, you can see how much it moves. If you really wanted to, I could take these bolts out and move them up one, or I could move these down an inch like we spoke before, but I like that much wiggle room and a folding rack just in case my floor is really unlevel, which is really common. So one more thing is I can kick those mats out nice and easy. Once I fold it back out, if I want it to be solid again, I can easily kick those mats back underneath and my rack is really stable again. So kick them out and you can move it back and forth really easy. Put them in, nice and stable rack, or you can use it without it. You don't have to have the mats in there. So this was how to attach your bells of steel folding rack to the wall with some wood stringers. We hope this video helps. Thank you so much. Hey folks, Kayvon here, founder of Bells of Steel. I hope you loved that video. Be sure to click on the link in the description if you wanna get those products for your own home gym. Don't forget to smash that like and subscribe button and let the games begin.